Hello and welcome to today's pattern. Uh, this one is unashamedly another one out of the small nymphs stable uh, and again it's something that focuses in on the large preponderance of small dark items that fish like to feed on. Jumping into the tying um, I'm going to be honest and say that the colour of the thread is probably not so important for this pattern but dark sort of bodies with red thread is it's a timeless combination so I'm going to go with uh, red ultimate tying silk for this one. I've already got a size 18 nymph wet hook. It's got a little bit sturdier wire that will sink a little bit quicker and it's a bit more robust if you're potentially encountering some, some bigger fish as well. Um, but that size 18 it's still in that very small food item sort of ballpark. There's a two millimeter copper colored tungsten bead in there as well. And then just catching on again because this is in the family of GSP threads they're quite slick and shiny so you want you know a nice double layer to set a real nice bed of that material so it grips onto the shank really well. Sever that off nice and neatly and this one again because I really like it for any of these kind of diptera and you know the midge larva and pupa uh, sort of bugs that uh, that fish come across, whether it's in winter or again in those sort of clear water conditions. Um, I'd like to keep the body slim and also I'm going to miss out the tails on this one as well. It's, it's possible to use sort of tail variations for this but I don't think there's as many applications as maybe some other patterns um, so I would definitely steer clear of, of the tails 99% of the time when I'm tying this particular fly. Uh, I'm going to go with a very slim body. I like to kind of keep these minimal and uh, basically if you can find a, a, a strand long enough, a, a feather barb long enough, I'd like to just use a single example of one of those. And you can either pluck it off or just snip it out if you're worried about snapping it too far away from the stem. Um, it just helps to preserve a bit more of that feather if you, if you take it from the you know, right down snug next to the, the stem of the feather. I'm going to break off the very tip of it because that's probably the, a little bit too weak. And then I'm going to tie it in flat. Again, depending on how long that fibre is, what you might want to do is actually catch it in pretty much, you know, just at the point of tying in, or you can go the sort of full length if you've got a nice generous fibre. So I kind of split the difference between those two, just pinch and loop that on there to get it to sit where I want and then take the body to where I'd like it to be. For this uh, as well I've got a very very fine uh, rib and in this case it's a, it's a light pink very fine wire 0 0.09 so I mean that's sort of tippet, you know, very pretty fine tippet material but it is in this nice light pink colour and I think adding that a little bit of attractive colour that's a bit of a contrast to the main body colour is, is super valuable and actually because it's that light pink rather than the really hot sort of obvious or deep pink it is it, it, it's something that we talk about quite a lot in um, how to fool fish with simple flies that idea of subtle variations and degrees of what we like to call anti-camouflage so it's knowing when to whisper with something like this or when to shout a bit louder so that, that light pink's a really nice weapon in that particular um, application. With this you can pinch and loop and then set the, the wire to whatever length you want. Come back up ready to receive that body material and that rib. And I just make sure that the, the underlying body shape is, is one that I want. Um, there's so many species of these Dipterans, you know, the, the midge sort of family, two winged flies. Um, you, you can't possibly keep up with them all. So that sort of small black grub like thing is, you know, it covers a lot of bases. What I like to do is, because I'm starting from the same end when I'm wrapping, I like to go in opposite spirals. But rather than um, wrap the feather in the conventional spiral in the same direction as the thread, I like to wrap the feather in the opposite spiral to the thread because the final 
capping layer, the thing that holds it all together, is the rib that sits over the top. And I want that rib crossing over each turn of the body material, but at um, you know, sort of an oblique angle to trap it down. But because this is the top layer, I want that one to be as tight as possible. And I, for that reason, I like it to be going in the same spiral, the same direction. It's being pulled tighter when you drop the turns of silk on at the end to finish it. It's a small detail, but it does help that avoid that rib going baggy and sort of losing its both its look, but also its integrity and its ability to hold that feather fibre together. Because again, it's a very, very delicate single strand of a thing that we're looking at here. And making sure that I come to the head side or the bead side of that wire rib. And going in, in that opposite spiral. And I suppose one thing that you do get from having that red underbody is that if you don't quite get your touching turns, having a little bit of that kind of haemoglobin looking pigment showing through that red colour is, is quite a good trigger for fish as well, I think. But what I do like about this single strand of peacock hurl is you get these amazing sort of almost body gill sort of looking effects as you wrap it. And I'm just going to make sure that I catch that in. So I've definitely got it consolidated what I've done already. And again, a couple of turns you can just fret that off. This one now, the, the wire rib is now just going to go in the same spiral as the tying thread. And I'm trying to lock over quite close turns really and, and part of that really is, is down to the fact that when you use a single feather barb those touching turns of that feather if you think of the stem at the center of that it's very very those touching turns are really close together so I want to make sure that I catch as many turns of feather as possible with that rib to hold it together and protect it from abrasion on the riverbed and, and the fish's teeth as well, particularly fishing for trout. This wire rib is so fine that it doesn't really take much fretting off at all. In fact, be a little bit careful if you're tying with fine wire. It can be more brittle than you uh, anticipate. I don't need to add more turns onto that because what I'm going to do is just go straight on with the whip finish. And because again, this is a very small fly, just to make that a bit neater, I can make that thread a little bit narrower by actually spinning that bobbin to kind of tighten, narrow down that uh, that thread so it's not too flat, so that the turns will sit very close to the bead there. And for double security, particularly with the materials that we're using, um, again, just going in with some fly tying glue to really make that a robust finish. Just get a few beads of that to sit on the thread. You don't need a lot. Let's come in, this is my trusty, probably 30 year old, probably about two pounds <laughs> cost whip finisher, but um, it does go to show that you can, you know, you can make very, very functional, very effective flies without necessarily spending a lot on all the tools that you use. Of course it's really nice to have like you know very posh and nice equipment, very well designed equipment. Um, but I find that if you, you know obviously with plenty of flying hours you get quite dexterous with whatever tools you get used to using. Um, and I've certainly logged a few flying hours with this whip finisher. I kind of just do as many turns as it takes to make the glue disappear and then snug that down. Just be a bit careful when you're using that to not hang about before you finish off with your fly because uh, if you're talking to the camera like I am, it can mean that the uh, the glue starts to set before you <laughs> you pull it tight. So don't hang around. Once you've applied, uh, applied that glue, whip on and then just sever your thread off with the, the V of your tying scissors. 
And that's us done. Um, again, a small nymph, surprisingly effective. It's very, very simple, um, but I've lost count of the number of fish that I've had on this on patterns like this, you know, prototypical patterns, tied small, particularly fished in winter, but also very good in clear water.